What's up guys? Today I'm going to talk to you about lambdas and DLQs. I'm going to tell you what a DLQ is, how it works, how to set it up, and some best practices. So firstly, what is a DLQ? Well, it's an abbreviation for dead letter Q, and it's a mechanism that helps prevent message loss in the case of failure during the lambda function invocation. So any kind of exception or anything that gets thrown is relevant to the DLQ. It works only on asynchronous Lambda invocations via SNS, SQS, or an HTTP client. And finally, in the case of failure, it can be configured to hold messages for reprocessing after you fix the problem in your function, or perhaps broadcast the failure to another system to take some kind of action on it. Now, in terms of how it works, now the behavior of the DLQ is slightly different depending on the source of the invocation. So in this example, we have three primary invocation sources. The first, you the client, maybe using the Lambda SDK via REST API. Secondly, maybe an SNS topic that you've set up with your Lambda as an endpoint. And then finally, maybe you have an SQS queue that acts as your event source for your invocations. Now over here, we have our Lambda function and our Lambda sits inside this black box of the Lambda service. So everything inside this box is internal to Lambda and happening behind the scenes. Uh, but they do tell us some interesting information as to how it works internally. And I think that's worth sharing with you today. Now the Lambda service exposes the invoke endpoint that is used by any event source, either being the SDK, SNS, or SQS in this example. Now with these three different event sources, they're all interacting with the invoke endpoint in one way, shape, or form. However, they're slightly different depending on each one. So let's go through that now. Now in terms of the client SDK, if you the client are attempting to invoke this function asynchronously, you call the invoke endpoint and set your request to asynchronous and pretty much off you go. Uh, with SNS, it's slightly different. Uh, it's an asynchronous environment by definition, so it's a bit more complicated. Uh, so what SNS will attempt to do is to asynchronously deliver the message every time you publish a message to SNS. And if it encounters any kind of failure when it tries to invoke the function, it'll attempt to retry over the course of approximately 12 hours. And that's if you have a retry policy enabled on your SNS topic. With SQS, it's a polling mechanism. So when you put a message into the queue, it'll get picked up via polling by Lambda and eventually process. Now, when this endpoint gets invoked, what does it mean to succeed? Now, does it mean that the Lambda gets invoked immediately? So that's something that you may think is the correct answer and certainly the most logical one. However, the real answer is not necessarily. So hitting the invoke endpoint asynchronously and getting a success back does not necessarily mean that your Lambda has processed or will process that message immediately. So what actually happens when you async invoke the function is that Lambda will put a message into an internal queue that only Lambda can see. This is entirely out of our view and within Lambda's internal implementation. Now the success that your async invocation receives is dependent on a successful insertion into the Lambda's internal queue. And that's how it, it defines success. Okay, so cool. So now we have some messages that are in our queue. So what happens next? So at this point, Lambda will attempt to process these messages in the queue. If the Lambda execution fails due to some kind of runtime exception that it encounters during processing, the message will be returned back to the internal queue three times with some degree of temporal back off between each attempt. After three failures, it's game over for that message. Lambda will abandon this request and send it to your DLQ. So remember that you have two options with our DLQ, either SNS or SQS. So with SNS, you can broadcast that message to an email or a mobile device or something to become aware. But in my opinion, that doesn't really help the situation. Sure, you may get notified of a problem, but the more important question is, what are you gonna do about it? And often in situations like this, we need to change something in our Lambda function or perhaps the configuration and attempt to reprocess those messages at a later time. And this is where using an SQS queue as your DLQ option really starts to show its value. Now, if we use an SQS queue as our DLQ, we effectively get a holding ground for all the failed messages. All the messages that fail to be processed will eventually make their way into this queue. Now, assume that one of your alarm fires that you have configured on this DLQ, and it's kind of an oh shoot moment. So something's wrong with your Lambda function, clearly, if messages are inside of this queue. It's failing maybe because someone passes in some kind of unexpected value or something silly like that, but the invocation is still technically valid and needs to go through eventually after you've corrected the problem. A second, probably more common scenario is maybe one of your dependencies your Lambda function relies on, it goes down, maybe something like Dynamo where it keeps on throttling you due to your capacity limits uh, and you can't succeed that invocation. So in the first case, we probably need to make a change to our Lambda function and re-upload it. In the second, maybe we need to increase our Dynamo limits. 
Regardless, something in either of these cases needs to happen first. So how do we reprocess these messages, right? So after we failed, how do we get this back into our original Lambda function? So a fairly common approach that I've seen is that some folks will build a secondary Lambda function that can pull the messages from the DLQ and attempt to reinvoke the Lambda with the contents of your SQS messages as arguments into it. It requires a little bit of work on your part because you need to write this extra function. However, it will certainly work for errors that are related to SNS failure to deliver or perhaps client issues when attempting to invoke your function. Now, if you're using an SQS queue as the event source, you probably just wanna transfer those messages back into the source queue. So you don't necessarily need an extra Lambda function if you're using SQS. Uh, it kind of makes your life a little bit easier. So that was a brief summary of how this works internally. Now let's move on to setup. So setup is super easy and it all happens via the AWS console. So all you do is go to the error handling section of your Lambda function and set the DLQ destination parameters. Uh, so this is how you would do it using SNS. Just as a quick warning, you need to give the SNS publish permission to your Lambda role or this won't work. In terms of SQS, it's pretty much the same story. You select your SQS event source and you're good to go. Uh, similarly, in terms of permissions, you need to grant the SQS send message permission to your Lambda function. Now in terms of pricing, uh, there's actually not too much to talk about here. Uh, pricing is dependent on the destination of your DLQ. Uh, so whether that be SNS or SQS, you're subject to their pricing model. Uh, however, I don't think cost is a real big issue here, or probably shouldn't be a big issue for most of you, uh, because ideally, if your application is pretty stable and it's not failing super often, you're not going to incur a lot of SNS or SQS costs as part of using the DLQ. So that's not too much of a concern here. And additionally, there's no extra charges here for using this feature on top of the ones I already mentioned. Now, in terms of best practices, there's three that I wanted to touch on. The first is to always have a DLQ to handle unexpected failure. And if you're running any event-driven production system, you always need to be ready to handle failure. Even if you're relying on AWS services that have 99.99999% uptime, failures do happen occasionally and it's important to be prepared. It's very little effort and very high benefit to have a DLQ at least set up. The second is that in the event that something does go wrong, you need to have a plan to redrive your messages. So your strategy may change depending on what your event source is, but a common one that works for almost all cases that I've looked at is, as I was discussing previously, write a separate Lambda function that can pull your DLQ and re-inject those messages back into your original Lambda. And the third, it doesn't matter if you have a DLQ and a redrive mechanism and a plan put in place, none of that matters if nothing tells you that there is a problem. So finally, make sure that you set up CloudWatch alarms on your DLQ size and make sure they notify you in case your Lambda starts failing and dropping messages. So if you like this video, I have a great Lambda playlist to check out where I discuss similar topics. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks so much and I'll see you next time.